Hi, today we're going to go over the interface of Pronterface. We're going to go over how to control your 3D printer using the user interface. We're going to go over how to send G code directly to your 3D printer, as well as the onboard slicing capabilities and printing capabilities that Pronterface offers. Okay, so now we're here in Pronterface. And so what we're going to do is we've got our 3D printer is connected with our micro USB to our Ender 3 V2. We're going to go ahead and connect on COM9 at 115,200 baud rate. I know that my 3D printer's baud is COM9 because under device manager ports, my 3D printer's USB serial CH340 COM9. I've got another video that explains how to download, install, and connect your 3D printer to Pronterface. So I'm going to go ahead and click Connect. So now my 3D printer is online. And so let's go ahead and give a tour of the Pronterface user interface. So we've got this area over here. This is where you can move your X, Y, and Z axis. You can also home your machine. You can do this through the MDI and the G code right over here. But right now, we're just going to play around with the user interface provided by Pronterface. So I'm going to hit the Home button. And you can see my X-axis just homed, Y-axis just homed, and now my Z-axis is going to home itself. And so now that we're homed, I'm going to go ahead and just use this interface to toggle the Z-axis up. I'm going to move my x-axis over. Now the only thing with this is it's only going to do one command at a time. And I'm going to move my y-axis. All right. So the next thing you can do is you can set your temperatures for your extruder as well as for your bed. So I'm going to go ahead. It's got a set up for PLA at 185 degrees Celsius, 230 degrees for ABS. I'm going to go ahead and I normally print at 200 or 205, so I'm going to put 200, hit the set, and you can notice this right here, if you double click on it, we can make it full screen. So this shows you what your current temperature is for your extruder, what your target temperature is, so mine is 200 degrees Celsius, and you can see it rising pretty quickly. Our bed target in our bed temperature. So let's go ahead and change our bed. I'm going to set it to 60 degrees. Hit the set button. And you can see that we've got things popping up over here in our MDI. And so now we've got our bed is rising to temperature. And I look over at my 3D printer interface on the Ender 3 V2 and it's changing over there as well. All right, so we'll minimize that. And we can also extrude in reverse. So you can extrude if you wanted to push filament out. Once we get up to temperature, we'll give that a shot. We can set the length we want to extrude as well as the feed rate. We can set our print rates and print flow rates. Now, if we come up here, we click File, we can open files, recent files. So I was playing around with a Benchy model earlier. Tools, we have a plater. So let's go ahead and take a look at that plater. So I'm going to load Benchy. Got a link to Benchy. So you can get the STL file as well. So here's Benchy. He's off the build plate. So I'm going to put him at center. If you hold the left mouse button, you can move and get a better look at Benchy. The right mouse button gets you to move instead of changing your angle. And the middle mouse button doesn't do anything. There's also an auto arrange button, but I'm going to put them at center. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit done. We'll go ahead and give it a second. Let 
Let's take a look at our temperatures. All right. So our temperatures now, we are at 200 degrees on our extruder. We're at 60 degrees on our bed. I look over at my printer and that's where it is as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude 50 millimeters. And we'll go ahead and see the cog just started to move on the extruder motor and you can see the filament coming out on the bed. So a few other things that we can do. So we saw the plater. Then we can also go ahead and there's a built-in slicer so that we can slice as well. So we have a G-code plater. So I'm gonna go back to Benchy and I'm gonna upload some G-code that I have of Benchy. I'm gonna put him to the center as well. And once again, left mouse button and we can change our angle of orientation. Take a look at Benchy. Right click and we can move around. So I'm gonna hit done here. So now you can see that we actually have Benchy on our uh, main Pronter face menu. And so what it's doing now is it's putting the G-code on there and all the commands. Benchy's still loading. I'm gonna go ahead and get that filament out of the way. So some of the other things that we can do. Let's go ahead and look at the slicer here. So it uses slicer three. We'll wait for it to load here. All right, so we're in simple mode. There is an expert mode, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. So we can set our layer height. I've got it at 0.2 millimeters right now. Our perimeters as well as our shells for the vertical and horizontal. One thing that's pretty important is this seam position. I always like to change mine to random, otherwise if you do a line it's going to basically have a straight uh, line of boogers up your print if you put it all aligned. You can change the infill pattern and there's all sorts of different patterns you can pick from. You can choose to have a skirt. I almost always print with a skirt. You can put support material and rafts. You can change the speed of your 3D printer and how fast you're printing. You can put, if you have multiple extruders, I only have one on this Ender 3 V2. And finally, you can add some notes. Filament setting, I've got 1.75 millimeters filament and I would set the extruder temperature to 200 degrees C and 60 degrees C on my bed. And you can also add custom G-code if you wanted to. Nozzle diameter is 0.4. There is a wizard and we'll go over that in a second here. All right. So if we went to the configuration wizard, we're gonna go ahead and just discard these. So welcome to the Slicer 3 configuration wizard. We've got a Marlin set up. Bed size is 220 by 220. Origin of XY is in the top left-hand corner. So that's correct. Nozzle diameter that comes standard with the printer is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We run 1.75 millimeter filament through that. Extrusion temperature, I'm just going to go with 200 and a bed temp of 60 degrees C. All right, and so now it put all of those things into the printer. Okay, and so I could print Benchy from here. Uh, in this case, I'm not. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the 
extruder temperature as well as the bed temperature. And so you can see that the set temps now have dropped. And so we're going to slowly see our extruder and our bed start to cool off. So that said, I'm going to come over here and let's take a look at the actual G-code editor. So one command that's pretty popular is G28, and that's how you actually home your machine, G28. I'm going to get this little bit of filament out of the way. So you can see the printer just homed in the x-axis and the y-axis and now in the z-axis. One really handy place to go, and I've got a link for this too, is this marlinfw.org meta g-code and this has every type of g-code that you can enter into your 3d printer and so if you want to learn more about g-code this is a really good place to go so let's go look at the g28 that we just entered in so it'll give you a description of what it does some notes about it as well as how to actually use it so I'm not going to go over a lot of these commands we will go over a few of them though, so let's go ahead and look at the linear move command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to hit G0, X50, Y50. So this is going to move X and Y at the same time, which is something that the user interface wouldn't let us do. Boy, it's moving really slow. So let's go ahead and also change our feed rate to 2000. It's not going to actually communicate that until it finishes this one line of G-code. So we're going to be here for a little bit. So that said, while we're waiting, let's hop back over to the G-code. So another important one is this G90 and G91 absolute versus relative positioning. So if you're going to use absolute, you need to home your machine first. Relative, it, it doesn't really matter. You just need to be careful not to crash your machine. So you would use these whenever you're calibrating and troubleshooting a 3D printer, for instance. Uh, disabling your stepper motors, if you wanted to move all your axes around by hand, this M18, M84 is a good command. So M104 that we're coming up on, set hot end temperature. This is a way that you can actually come in and set the temperature of your machine. I'm going to go ahead and have it move to 100. See how much faster that's moving now at a 2,000 millimeter per second feed rate. So you can also set your feed rate whenever you're using a G0 or G1 command. So now I'm going to enter in an M104. And this is how we're going to set our hot end temperature, M104, S200. So, oh, had a space in there. That's important. All right. So now, if we come in and we look at our temperature graph, it's bumped back up again to 200. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to, let's just say, 25. And you can see down here in our little menu that it changed again. And so now the extruder is going to start cooling off. We can change our bed temperature with an M140 command. So let's do that. Let's change it to 60. And we can see that our bed target has jumped up now. I'm going to set that back to 25. Uh, now, one other thing that I find is very important, um, we'll get to this in a future video, this M303 PID Auto-Tune, that's really important for tuning how fast your printer gets to temperature as well as how stable it is at that temperature. So this M500 is how we save settings to EEPROM. And then this M503 is how we report settings. So let's see what our settings are. You can also set your settings back to factory defaults. So M503, and it just spit out a whole bunch of stuff. So let's crawl back up here, starting right here. 
So we look and it tells us G21, our units are in millimeters. Our filament diameter is 1.75. It tells us what our feed rate is. It tells us what our acceleration is. It tells us that our printer is in the jerk configuration for acceleration. What our PID settings are, so proportional integral derivative and we can change that later. And so that's a really important command. So you can also print from Pronterface, you can print from an SD card, you can print just like this little benchy here, and you can also turn your machine off. So that said, that's a pretty good introduction to Pronterface. Thank you.